Welcome, another episode from the Things Conference in Amsterdam. Um, got a new guest. Who are you and what do you do? Hi, uh, I'm Sven and I'm the hardware lead at uh, TWTG. So, uh, yeah, I develop uh, cool stuff together with a lot cool of stuff, cool people. Cool stuff, cool stuff. Explain a bit. What, what kind of cool stuff do you develop? Uh, well, we develop uh, connected hardware uh, for all kinds of clients in the Netherlands and also for ourselves, hardware that we think is cool. Uh, and, well, a bit more relevant uh, for this uh, conference, we actually developed the Things Network hardware. So the Uno, Note and the Gateway. Okay, that's great. Uh, and how many did you produce? Uh, what can it do? Uh, how easy uh, is it to use? Um, yeah, we, the, well, the, currently we produced a lot. Uh, uh, it, it's more than a thousand gateways are already out and more are being produced. Um, well, for the Uno and the Note, uh, multiples of that. Uh, they're smaller devices. Uh, yeah, the aim was to create a LoRa, well, to create a device that would allow you to create a network in a couple of minutes. And well, I think we succeeded in that, considering that a lot of people actually managed to get their network up and running within five minutes. So that's uh, quite an achievement for a, a network carry carry great telecom network. Great. And, and is there any limitations? Uh, what can you do with it? Uh, well, the limitations uh, are more embedded in the LoRa One itself than in our device. So everything a normal gateway would support, our gateway also supports. So, so, so we're here at an, uh, the, the the Things conference. So it's all about uh, and, and LoRa and, and other technologies, uh, connected uh, technologies. So. Um, as an expert, how do you see the technology? Where are we at? Well, currently we are starting to go to the adoption phase. So uh, in the beginning, uh, a lot of uh, pilots were uh, run and uh, we see that a lot of uh, companies are actually asking for the technology, uh, but they haven't had much experience with it yet. So LoRa is not embedded into the bigger uh, uh, products or the bigger product, uh, bigger environments because well, it's all in tests, uh, test setting. Uh, but we now see that the technology becomes more trusted and that people actually starting to adopt it in their daily uh, use, the daily sensors, uh, sensor needs uh, within companies. So that's actually quite positive development. And uh, well, it has took quite some time to get here. So it's quite an exciting time. Great. Um, and can you also give some examples of uh, projects that you've seen in, in the field that are very exciting and that are using, uh, well, LoRa in, in the best yeah. possible way? Yeah, so, so uh, for instance, take smart parking sensors. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's an application that was usually very difficult to do because uh, detecting a car or a truck in itself is already quite complicated. But once you solve that, then you enter the connectivity problems because are you going to uh, put a wire to every parking lot? Uh, no, not really that great. But then are you going to put a receiver uh, next to every parking lot? Uh, also not that great. So uh, that's where LoRa really can make a difference because with one gateway uh, positioned in a good place, you can serve multiple parking lots. Uh, so without having to put any additional wires. And LoRa is so low power that it actually allows us to embed an energy source within that device that can last for almost 20 years. Just by using a low power technology. Uh, and of course, the, the more cars, the more messaging, the, the more battery is consumed. But in general, the power consumption is so low that we can now embed it into products where it never ha with a battery where it never has to go out again. So that could also create a new kind of design because you don't design it in a way that you could switch batteries. You basically exact just switch the whole Exactly, hardware. and we're even going further because we now see, well, if everybody's going to put batteries into everything, then we're going to end up with an environmental disaster, right? So we're also currently looking into ways, how can we manage our energy in such a way that we can all do it with solar or external, external harvesting so we don't have to rely on the battery source that might fail and is a pollutant. So that is the next step for uh, sensor development, okay. I think. We're going to come back to the next steps uh, later, I think. But mm -hmm. uh, for, for now, this, this example of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, just car, uh, tracking where the car mm -hmm. uh, park uh, space is, is empty or everything, is, is it a, a project that is already live somewhere in yes, the world? Yes, yes, you can check it out in the port of Amsterdam. There are actually a couple of sensors uh, that are currently being tested. Uh, so they're there to detect cars and trucks. Um, so yeah, that is an actual ongoing project and there are multiple uh, different uh, companies also working on it. I don't know how they manage their connectivity, but uh, they also uh, do sensoring with uh, uh, yeah, parking sensors embedded into uh, stones or embedded into the ground itself. 
And if you look at the developments uh, um, globally, uh, mm. are there certain hotspots, are there certain areas or certain um, well, industries where well, things for, are moving faster? Well, for the for LoRa in a broad sense, uh, well, due to the momentum that things network created, we see a clear hot hotspot uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, but that's also I might be a slight bit biased because I haven't explored other uh, LoRa setups uh, in foreign countries. Uh, no, but I think for the moment, this, uh, the, uh, the Netherlands and Switzerland, there's a, a lot of gateways that are deployed already there. And I, if you take the amount of gateways attached to the Things network as a sort of a statistical measure, then yeah, those two countries will be the top, uh, the top countries for the moment. Right. And, and is there certain industries that are using it, or health or uh, um, governments? Or, uh, well, uh, for most uh, now it is, uh, it is industry, so uh, the more uh, as a censoring of temperature, uh, the movement, uh, asset tracking. So that's, that is where it's now currently uh, being already employed and uh, where the use case really nicely fits. Uh, but there are more and more markets uh, that are opening up uh, because uh, the energy in combination with the range is, is unmatched for the moment. Right. So if we talk about the future, what, as in, um, if you look at, at the current developments, what is the, the, the biggest problem that we need to solve for a further adoption of uh, this new technology. Well, uh, there are there are a couple of things. Um, the, the the on the software side and on the on the uh, the LoRa one side, things work out quite nice. Uh, it's it's a really uh, robust network and it's really easy to set up. Uh, what we currently see as a problem is that LoRa one still makes it complicated to update the firmware on end devices. And although you can take a lot of measures to circumvent security problems, you can create additional layers of security, but we see that our customers are not really comfortable with the thought of having difficulty uh, of updating a device over the air. I mean, it also makes things more secure because there's less attack surface. But on the other hand, uh, well, if an imminent failure exists in the firmware that eventually pops, then well, y you might want to update the firmware, and that uh, we are now seeing that they're also they're all the, the alliance is also working towards a way to update the firmware over the air. There are already demos out there today. Actually, uh, a demo will be presented uh, where firmware is updated over the air through LoRa, uh, and I think that will be another uh, extra boost for the adoption. Yes. You already mentioned security. Well, these days there's so many uh, talks about uh, hacks and everything. Yes. Uh, um, so it's probably a question you get uh, all yes, the time. How secure it. is it and, yes. uh, and what can we do to make it more secure? Yes, well, the, it, technically, uh, LoRa is a really secure solution. As lo if, you, um, if you control the server environment yourself or rely on a trusted party like the Things Network, uh, then the only real risk is in physical attacks on your device. So if you don't equip your device with temper detection, then, well, there's a risk introduced because then false sensor data could be generated and there's no way to know that this actually false data. So if you act upon it, well, you might have a problem, especially in life critical situations. So uh, therefore we would always advise to, to include if, if that is a problem to include a temper detection on the device itself, because from uh, uh, like, like a Wi-Fi attack, uh, where you attack over the air, it is, uh, with LoRa it's really complicated due to the pre-sharing of keys, uh, if you set it up in the right way. Uh, so you have to be either there at the right moment and then still you've got a lot of trouble uh, to actually be a man in the middle. So uh, no, in that sense, LoRa is inherently safe as long as the server and the device itself are kept safe. And everything in between doesn't have to be that safe, but those two points really need to be safe. Okay, well, that's great. Um, last question. Um, mm -hmm. This is the first edition of the Things uh, Conference. It's probably going to be a, a next one next there year. Will be yeah, a lot. yeah, yeah. Yes. So, uh, um, what do you think should or will be the topic uh, uh, next year? Oh, that is a really good question. That is something that technically we need to think about before giving an answer. But um, no, I think when we are, when we are here uh, next year, it will be uh, less about the adoption, but more about optimization of uh, the, the range, maybe localization. We all hope that eventually that will uh, also materialize as a as a, an extra feature within LoRa, uh, and then. An, an entire new range of use cases can be uh, can be thought of uh, where LoRa would be uh, would provide added value. So, 
I think it's uh, it, now we see a lot of people that are putting LoRa into products. I think next year, uh, yeah, there will be that that will be a given. Now move forward. How can we uh, how can we improve it? So, I think that will be the talk of the day then. Oh, great. All right. Thank you for watching, and uh, uh, you can uh, see a lot of uh, extra episodes in our uh, YouTube channel. So uh, watch them all. <laughs>